Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Joby Wavo Pod. This is a gateway microphone, so Joby calls it, for podcasters and streamers. And you'll note that Joby is the company that bought you Gorillapod, and that's why I've mounted this one on a Gorillapod. But it is obviously also mountable on a boom arm, and it does come with its own desk stand, as I'll show you in a minute. Now, this is an interesting microphone because it's reasonably affordable. comes in at about £85 sterling probably about $89, somewhere around that price point. And it's a fairly straightforward microphone with multiple mounting options. So you can see that it has this nice solid desk stand here and then a fairly straightforward setup with its own pop shield on the front. Very Joby branded, obviously with the logo and a very red sort of accent on it. So it's got quite an interesting style to it. But as I said, you can take that off and you can mount it on a boom arm. And I'm gonna show you the process for that a bit later on. That is one of the complaints that I do have about this microphone is the boom arm mounting. And I'll talk about why later. And I'll also show you what you can do to adjust the sound in there as well near the end and my recommendations for sound settings. But I am using the microphone right now to give you a voiceover for this video so that you can get an idea of the quality immediately. And I will say it's pretty good quality capture for a USB microphone. So this is a USB plug and play microphone and it comes with two different cables that I'll show you in a second for ease of use. It also has omnidirectional and cardioid capture patterns so you can either have it as a podcast microphone where there's two of you in the room for example with a interview style recording or just if you want to talk straight into the microphone yourself then you can use it that way and you can remove the pop shield as well and you have the ability to put two on here if you want to so you can have people talking on either side the extra one's not included but it is possible to mount two on there so that's something of interest but you can also take that off if you don't like it you can remove that entirely now in the box you get two different usb cables usb a to USB C and then USB C to USB C, so you have the option to connect it up and it'll plug and play with any laptop or Mac. So, fairly straightforward connectivity. Also, has mic monitoring as you might have seen already, so you can plug a headset straight into it and then you can pass the sound through it so you can listen to music and other things, but also monitor your microphone with ease. And I'll show you the settings and how to do that a bit later on if you're interested and apologies for the wound on my hand i got bitten by a pet rabbit which is very annoying but that's unrelated and then you'll see that you have a simple mute button in the middle and you can adjust the volumes in there and i'll talk about that as well i'll show you what to do when it's plugged in the stand is removable i really like the space it's quite heavy and hefty and it's got a good solid weight to it i feel like the microphone itself feels quite cheap by comparison sort of lightweight and weak plastics perhaps i don't know how that will hold up over time however the capture quality as you can hear is excellent with one minor drawback which i will show you later on you do however have the ability to mount it in different ways so you can see that you can use a gorilla pod on the bottom here for example but what you will have spied is that there are joby link holes on the sides and that means that you can use various different joby products and mounting options so not only the gorilla pod but also other brackets and in the examples that they've given you can essentially connect up something like a smartphone holder so you could strap your phone to the side of the microphone which i could see could be useful actually if you have a live stream chat that you want to see on a regular basis and keep an eye on while you're streaming you can have that directly next to the microphone so you can literally look at it and talk into the mic at the same time which i think could be really useful for streamers unfortunately i don't have one of those to be able to demonstrate it but i will link to their video in the description so you can see what i mean and basically it gives you various different mounting points where you could attach things to the microphone as i said the mic itself is not that heavy though and that could be a benefit because when it's off the stand it's quite lightweight this is something to bear in mind depending on your boom arm though because some boom arms struggle with either heavy microphones or light microphones i'll leave the specifications in the description but i've been using it on the rode psa one plus that you can see here and i haven't had a problem with it there mounting is fairly straightforward with one small caveat now underneath there is a hole there's also an attachment on there so you've got different mounting options for the thread but you'll see it mounts simply onto the psa one plus once you take that standard mount out the bottom you can then just screw it onto the standard mounting thread with ease the problem comes here is actually it's really difficult to plug your cable in once it's mounted 
and I'll show you what I mean in a second. But mounting it on a boom arm is pretty important because it gives you a better capture quality. That's the same with any microphone and this one especially it's important to get it up on a boom arm. So though you have the ability to put it on the desk stand and the desk stand will do a good job of keeping it nice and solid you get a much better quality especially if you have a very loud environment around you with a lot of fan noise for example passing traffic and other things you can get a mic off a stand and onto a boom arm it can make a big difference to the sound quality and i'll show you the difference between the two with it captured on the boom arm and on the desk later on so you can hear that now you can see it's quite a nice looking microphone from various different angles the red accents make it stand out quite nicely and obviously it's customizable because you can take off that pop shield as i said and you can obviously choose how you're going to mount it and what you're going to mount to it, which I think is pretty cool. So you have a variety of different options. Now in terms of the controls, you can see you have a pattern switch underneath the volume wheel, and that switch is between omnidirectional, which basically captures sound around the entire thing, and cardioid, which picks up from in front of the microphone, which is the best if you're going to be just talking on your own. On the underside, you'll see the connections for the USB-C connection, and then 3.5mm jack for mic monitoring, and also sound pass-through. So if you've got a 3.5mm headset or headphones, you can plug them in there, and then you can get that audio. And then there's the removable thing for mounting it on a boom arm or other mic stand on the underside as well. So what you've seen so far is a reasonably affordable microphone with lots of different options and as you can hear it's a very good sound capture it's a very nice microphone really simple to set up really easy plug and play and set up in windows and i'll show you that later as well and very straightforward and wonderful but the main drawback my biggest complaint about it is the thought that's gone into the placement of the usb connection now your experience may vary but on the psa one plus I found that once I screwed it into the boom arm, I then really struggled trying to plug in the USB-C cable. The base of the microphone is essentially really small. The whole thing's pretty small, as you can see. And the result of this is it means the USB-C plug is very close to the attachment. So it's really hard to then stick the cable in. In fact, I couldn't do it with this. Now, there's a tightening disc on the boom arm at the moment that you'll see just sitting below the microphone the idea with that is once the mic's on you then swivel that disc up so it tightens up and keeps the thing in place however that's too wide and then you can see from this angle that it's not actually possible to plug the cable in which is a problem so you have to take the microphone off take that disc off and then plug the cable in this is a small complaint and obviously it may vary depending on what boom arm you're using you might not have this issue with other boom arms but the PSA One Plus is a great option as a boom arm, nice and solid, good quality, and easy to use, really flexible. And it does work with this mic as well, so the mic doesn't have any problems in terms of sort of springing up on the boom arm. It sits nicely on it. The downside is that you can't easily plug your cables in, which seems like an oversight or a problem, and a minor one, but the one that I'd like to complain about if I had any complaints with it so far. But you can see it is possible with a little bit of convincing. It's a quite tight fit with the length of the cable. You could plug the cable in first and then try screwing it in. But that in itself would be quite a difficulty. But here you can see the final product with it mounted on the boom arm. Get an idea of what that's like. Now there are different polar patterns that you can see as you can switch between those. But also the mic mute button, when you press it, it turns red to let you know that the microphone is muted. But it also has two different colours. It has blue and it has this sort of purple colour. When it's in purple, that is the mic gain level. So that's the level of the microphone that is picking up, the amount of sound that is picking up from the surrounding environment. And you really want to get that as low as possible to reduce the amount of noise that's going to pick up that you don't want captured by the microphone. You can then adjust, obviously, when it's on the blue, the amount of sound that you're going to hear through the mic monitoring and through your headphones. So that's adjustable there. And once you've done that, you can then get on with gaming or streaming or podcasting or whatever else with relative ease. There are some settings to tweak within Windows, which I'll quickly show you. And then I'll show you the difference between it mounted on the boom arm and on the stand. When you go into Windows, there are a few things to do to maximize the sound. So first thing, obviously, is to go into your Windows sound settings by clicking on the speaker in the bottom right. And you want to check that speakers are set 
to the Wavo pod and microphone as well. That ensures that the audio is coming through from the 3.5mm connection so you can hear it through your headset and also that you're recording through the mic. If you dive into the more sound settings and then go into the recordings tab in Windows, you'll also find the microphone in here. And if you right click on that, you can then set it as the default communication device. Doing this will ensure that it's using the mic to both give you the sound from the microphone and also to record audio. You'll notice that I also have this set to microphone volume about 70% and this is sort of the levels that I've found that gives you a good capture quality in Windows. This is separate from the hardware gain levels on the microphone, so it's worth playing around with both. You'll also see that you can capture at 48 kilohertz 24-bit audio in here, so that's worth noting for the quality of the sound capture. Now, doing this setup is important in Windows to make sure you've got the right levels, but you can also go into the playback section and again, find the WavoPod. Now I'm assuming that you want to plug a 3.5mm headset into the microphone and mic monitor or to get your audio through here. If you do, set that as your default communication device and then you can check things like the volume levels. You can apply enhancements. You can adjust the quality because again 24-bit 48 kilohertz studio quality audio through the microphone. So that means that you can listen to high quality sound that way if you have a headset that can do it justice. Also, you can go into the spatial audio settings and you can apply something like Windows Sonic sounds. So you can get surround sound out of this microphone through your headset. And this is a simple way of doing it. So I've already demonstrated how you set up the microphone in Windows, but now I want to demonstrate some of the settings in OBS. Now I'm using OBS Studio here and you'll see that if you go into the settings for that, you can set the microphone as wave pod, obviously, wave o pod in the auxiliary settings here, mic audio settings. And then I've currently got desktop audio set to default, which again would be the microphone because that's what I've set in Windows sound settings. One of the things I want to demonstrate is this is a way of showing how much background noise the microphone picks up because the level gauge down the bottom here doesn't have any filters applied to it at the moment. So if I'm really quiet and don't say anything, you might hear some background noise from the microphone. And it's not actually picking up that much at the moment, but just to demonstrate what I mean, if I switch it on to here, so I'm changing the gain level and turn the gain up, you'll see that the levels change quite significantly. So now obviously you can hear me a lot clearer and I am a lot louder. I can hear myself a lot more through the mic monitoring, but also you can hear the fan noise from my PC now in the background because I've turned the gain up. And one of the things that you'll notice when you're in OBS, and this is a good way to deal with this noise and work out how to eliminate background noise and what level to keep your gain at if you're using a microphone like this, is to watch the level meters in OBS and see whether they are actually appearing when you're not saying anything. And you can see them currently down over here at this level at this point when I'm not talking. Now there are ways around this by applying filters in OBS. You can apply noise gate filters and other things to eliminate some of this noise. But actually the best way to do it is to simply get the mic close to your mouth and then turn the gain back down because if you adjust the gain as I will now you'll see that level drops off completely. And now you can see those barely registering, although obviously I'm a lot quieter and that's something to account for. You could again, I could once again move the microphone even closer to my mouth and get a better quality. Obviously it looks silly from this angle, but <laughs> it is very close. And it, this is something to play around with depending on your environment. And obviously there are other ways to do it. You could use NVIDIA's broadcast app, for example, to eliminate some of the background noise. You could apply filters in OBS and other things, but the point is, if you have the mic further away, obviously you might have to turn the gain up. 
also need to reposition the microphone so it's facing towards me because that's how it captures the audio so these are all things to think of if I need to turn the gain up I then have to think about the background noise it's potentially picking up now my computer is actually behind the microphone so actually with it pointing this way I could probably get away with turning the gain up and it won't hear it pick as much of fan noise up I can still see that some of it's registering. The other thing I want to demonstrate is just how much background noise this picks up. So I'm just going to type now a little bit in the background on my keyboard. And I can see some of it's being picked up. Another thing that I want to show that unfortunately is a problem with this microphone at least in this setup, is there's an issue with the shock absorption. So I've noticed, for example, that when I'm tapping on the desk, you can really hear a hollow ringing through the boom arm and into the mic. Unfortunately, it picks up quite badly. And if I tap the boom arm, you'll see that as well. Now, this is a good quality boom arm. I have seen this problem with other microphones as well. Um, but it is obviously quite an issue. Now, you're not going to be actively tapping your boom arm a lot, but if you're knocking the desk accidentally, bumping into it, it's obviously resonating through the microphone. You could get some sort of shock mount system to attach to this, which would probably eliminate some of that, but it's worth bearing in mind. If you tap the mic itself as well, it picks up a lot of that noise, and if you really bump it, it's pretty horrible. And now, one of the things to bear in mind with this is the mute button obviously requires you to press on here which is not a quiet click you can hear just how loud that is when it's picked up so it's quite unfortunate and um, I don't really like the mute button for that reason you'd be better off using a mute functionality in Windows or assigning some sort of key to mute the microphone because obviously that Dong, whenever you press the mute button is not ideal for whatever purpose you're using it for. So these are things to bear in mind. Unfortunately, small issues with a microphone that otherwise delivers a good capture quality. Now I'm going to show you what it's like when it's on the desk. So now I have the microphone on the desk and you can see it just over here next to my keyboard. This is not an ideal position, right? Because it's quite a long distance away and you probably find that it will pick up a lot more background noise now so if I start typing then you'll probably hear a lot more of that sound being picked up and that's obviously an issue. You can still hear some of the desk tapping as well going through into the microphone however Desk, the stand is really solid. I actually think there's a bit less of it. There's a bit less of the tapping going through into it. So it's not absorbing as much, which is interesting because it's not on a shock mount or anything there. It is obviously on its stand and not in a great position because it's quite a bit further away from my mouth than you'd like. So what you probably want to do is move it closer and then tip it upwards and try and get your keyboard behind it so that the sound is actually picking up my voice rather than that of a keyboard so then that should eliminate some of the background noise and gets it closer which then obviously accentuates your voice and makes it a bit nicer so this is the better option if you have a mic next to you i don't know about you but i like to have my drink on my left hand side though so that doesn't fit there and obviously it presents a problem so boom arms on the way forward. So there you have it, the JB Wavo Pod. As you can see, it's fairly interesting in things like the mounting options with the one simple frustration of being a bit tricky to mount on a boom arm. However, I do think a boom arm and a shock mount are going to be very important if you want to get good sound out of it because my main two gripes are the connectivity problem that I had with plugging the cable in and also just the sheer amount of noise that it picks up from shocks on the desk and through the boom arm and obviously on the desk mount. Now the mount on the desk is pretty good, it's good sturdy solid base and it's good quality. 
However, it is problematic and obviously reducing the gain as much as possible results in a better sound. But I do think that the microphone is good value for money, delivers a good sound and obviously your experience will vary depending on your room. A super special thanks to YouTube members Raw483, I Spawn A Lot, Meaty Keyboard, Beast of Bunny, J Shank007, Rigsy79, Star Astons, McFarty, Aaron Yard and, and Chief Howe. Now if you've made it this far in the video and you enjoyed it or found it useful, smash that subscribe button and hit the like button for me to help me out. Thanks for watching, let me know in the comments if you've got any questions, be sure to check out the playlist of the other microphones I've tested and have a great life. This has been the Provoke Prawn, hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.